I had no notion of getting involved in being in community change as a career. I just got married, we had a couple of kids. We had just moved into this neighborhood and we started wondering about, you know, what's this neighborhood gonna be like? It looks decrepit, it looks run down, but for us, we're gonna have to be here. So we probably need to find out more about what's happening. As, as parents, more than anything, I became involved in a group of people organizing to get an abandoned furniture warehouse converted to a community center. And it became real clear that power was the issue. And if the community felt power through this institution, then they might be more inclined to want to see it survive. That was my transition from being this concerned parent to being, okay, I'm in this space, now what? You can't go through all of them, but I know. After, it was about four, five years maybe, I began to encounter my real limitations in terms of making this project sustainable. And it was starting to manifest itself in frustration and not knowing what to do or where to go with that. Meanwhile, and you say fate, whatever you want to put to it, I buy it, right? I received this flyer and I couldn't figure out why it came to me and it, it listed an opening I was like, this is our experience. This is our last five years experience. They're looking for someone to do that. But when I looked at my background, the high school dropout stuff, I didn't know how to reconcile the qualifications they were asking for. For some reason, I didn't throw it away. I don't even know how to explain all of this. I was like, you know what? I put this thing in my drawer. Let me take it out and look at it. And I looked at it, and the day that I looked at it was the deadline. So now I can procrastinate no more, I need to make a decision. So what I did was did a resume, which not, was not all that compelling for this job, but I packed it with all these newspaper clippings and all these recordings or documentations of things we'd done and sent it to this organization called the Center for Community Change. This is what they were looking for. I didn't know that, right? But they were looking for somebody who wasn't a researcher, who had some practical experience trying to change things. We designed them with intent of learning from each other, not us preaching to people. And so I fit that profile to a T. And we had taught ourselves, and we built our own power base, and we started from ground, we studied the CDBG program. informed ourselves about how it operates, and then we had connected that to a broader neighborhood change strategy. I felt welcome right away, and our group did. We felt so welcome that we started out being rebels. We started out critiquing the development and the technical assistance work within CCC. Now, quiet as it's kept though, I think the leadership at CCC was kind of okay with that, right? They kind of wanted to get more into that anyway. I think that we got special attention because we, we came with that. Because researchers come with the credentials, community people have the anecdotes, they need to match up to be real. But we wanna, I wanna make some space though for a small amount of chatter and dialogue and reaction. We thought it was kind of passive um, to just do research and put papers and do testimony. We're like, ah, that means we're relying on someone else to make change on the behalf of communities. The way we went about the citizen monitoring project was to use the monitoring project and the monitoring of the CGB program as a way to build the capacity and power of local groups. So we wanted to seek out and work with groups that who would use the research and put action behind the research to make real change happen locally, and that we could use then the evidence from that change to influence national policy. So we concentrated on then working more with groups who were doing community organizing and working with people in, that were affected in these neighborhoods. We thought we would be creating a lasting kind of change. I came to D.C. with all this hope Carter was the president. And I was like, oh, wow, this is going to be fun being in this space. Today, however, Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan met again in the office that Mr. Carter has now lost and that Mr.
Mr. Reagan has won. And lo and behold, Ronald Reagan beat him and he was elected. And so the political environment changed. And so the notion of what the Citizens Monitoring Project was about, which received significant federal funds, was clear that that wasn't going to continue. Suddenly, what I thought was going to be a great opportunity to learn and grow felt like a big disappointment was about to happen. We got past that because the center was committed to just these notions that were evolving from the Citizen Monitoring Project. And so I got a chance to work on the staff. I'm beginning to see this pattern, right? We're jumping into things that you don't know what they're doing, but jump in and be honest and be authentic and be open to learning. And I was starting to see that that formula was paying off for me. I just need to get better at it. Just keep getting better at helping people and keep getting better at making CCC a resource for people to change things. And I dug up all these groups and all these relationships and was authentic with them and they loved CCC. Now, when we bought the building, I was like, whoa, we're really here. I know, I get it about being in Georgetown. Is, you, you, we feel like some kind of contradiction, but from where I come from, it's not a contradiction. It's a statement. My profile wouldn't have gotten me here had CCC not been desirous of diversity in its own context. And I saw that play out gradually and more and more as I was there. Um, people of color being named to positions or promoted to positions, and I could see and feel on almost on a daily basis. The leadership at the time, they, they were struggling for a way to really live up to those principles. First time I saw it happen was when they opened up the West Coast office and put a colleague of mine from the National Citizen Monitoring Project as the director, this woman named Rachel Sierra. For me, though, it reached its pinnacle when they named DPAC, executive director. Throughout our history, change has been won by people with the courage to take history into our own hands. DPAC took CCC to a more, in my view, activist role, a more leadership role, and CCC has been reinvented, and it is still as powerful and as strong and as capable. So that journey and how that was navigated at CCC is a model. Um, for transition in power and for institutions who want to bring young people on and institutions who want to do, bring more diversity into their leadership, they should study that model. In this context of making change, sometimes things don't come in the package that we expect. I was there for 15 years. After, mind you, I had packed my family up when we moved to D.C. with assurances that it would only be a year. So even in my new space, and new spaces since then, I keep bumping into the influences of CCC. But really, this institution was before me, and a lot was happening. And what I learned is that it had been an incubator of ideas through the various projects. CCC was right in the middle of history. It was right in the middle of change that was happening in this country at all levels. And it was there because not as an institution, it became a change place, but the minds and the people who were orchestrating change from the government level around the war on poverty on through was coming through the center. The connecting point was wanting to have a better life or ensure a safe neighborhood and a nurturing environment for my kids.